can you explain what a uh, Paycheck Protection Program loan is? So this is a loan to uh, small businesses, okay, or presumably small businesses, um, although some really big businesses got them. And it's, it's, to, it's actually to take care of payroll, uh, basically payroll and uh, rent and utilities for about eight weeks. It's, a, it's an interim uh, assistance to small businesses um, who are trying to keep their, pay, their employees um, employed, gainfully employed during uh, a time when they may not otherwise be able to afford to do so. A new round of funding is, is expected to be passed this week. Uh, if When that happens, should small businesses jump on that? I think small businesses should be already applying even before it happens because they need to get into process, um, their loans into process so that they'll be there and not be uh, cut out again because uh, who knows if this next round of funding will be enough. $300 billion, is, to you, does that sound a lot like a lot or too little? Can you speculate you know, at all? It, it, it doesn't. I mean, consider that the first round was $350 billion, and that was uh, exhausted in about a week. So granted, the big companies have already gotten theirs, okay? So McDonald's and Ruth's Chris and, and those big um, franchises have already received their money. The question okay. is, uh, will, will there be enough for the little guys um, who don't really have the strong banking relationships. That's actually uh, part of what they've been discussing in Congress is uh, what about all these uh, small businesses, independent contractors who don't really have a good banking relationship? How are they going to get taken care of um, because they got shut out in the first round? Okay, well, for the little guys, for the small businesses, I'm sure a lot of them are trying to figure this out for the first time. What do they need to know? So here's what you need to know. You need to get information together. Um, most importantly is your average monthly payroll. So you need your payroll reports put together. You need to make sure that you have, uh, I would have your financial statements together. You need to have um, things like your utilities and your, your rent, know what those are. Because the bank's going to ask you for this information. So let's get all the information together now, meet with your CPA, Get, get, their, get their help to get this information together and then get in front of a bank. Um, that's most important is get in front of a bank as soon as possible. Okay, speaking of that, uh, some business owners have told us that a few major banks, some of their banks aren't accepting PPP applications. Can you speak to that at all? Well, yeah, what, what happened was is that the big banks went to their prime customers, right? Um, like the big franchises and they ran out of money. So, you know, the, the hope is, is that these banks now have some money, but really the smaller banks, my experience has been um, with our clients is that those who have been working with the smaller local banks have had much more success. So if you have a small local bank or a regional bank, I would go in right, uh, not go in, but I would, I would get on the phone with somebody right now and see if maybe you could make a deposit in their bank, set up an account, somehow get started. Um, because the big banks, you're absolutely right, the big, the big banks have not cooperated and been nearly as successful as the small local banks. Okay, so like that's one issue. Is there any other issues that might come up if someone's doing this for the first time? Well, yeah, so another issue that's gonna come up, of course, is that um, that you know there's two sides of this one is the loan side where you actually get the money and the other side is the forgiveness side so the idea of the paycheck protection plan uh, program is that yes you'll get some money up you'll get some money and you'll use it for your employees and your rent and utilities but you also don't want to have to pay any money back <laughs> So you want to make sure that you know what your what eight weeks because it's an eight week period. It's eight weeks. Remember, it's eight weeks from when you get the money. That's when the, the eight weeks begins. So as soon as you get the money, you've got eight weeks to spend it. And you really ought to be considering how am I going to properly spend that money during that eight week period to meet all the rules so that I don't owe money at the end of the eight weeks. If you're approved, you get the money. Great. How do you triage? What are like the most important priorities for businesses? So, so first of all, recognize that 75% of the money needs to go to payroll. 
So um, you can hire employees back, okay? You can even give employees a bonus. Um, you can't take money out yourself, okay? This, and except as, you know, except as an employee, right? So you're probably an employee. Um, you can use it for utilities and rent, but the utilities and rent portion can only be 25% of the total. So I would sit down, what, what I found most of my colleagues have done, CPAs, is we sat, sat down with our clients and actually scheduled out exactly how they could use the money and how that 75% uh, requirement is gonna work in their business. Are there any other resources for small businesses that, I mean, obviously there's a lot, like what other things should small businesses be looking into right now? Yeah, for sure. So one of the other um, aspects of the, uh, of the CARES Act that ran out of money was this EIDL program, which is the Emergency Injury Defense um, uh, Loan. And there's a $10,000 of that that's forgivable and that you should be able to get, well, you say quickly, but the SBA has been pretty slow on it. Well, that's $10,000 in addition to the PPP loan. So um, they've at their, the, where Congress is right now, that looks like they're adding another $60 billion to that program. And that's a, you know, $10,000 for a really small business could last them two or three months. So that's another one to be looking into. There are also, by the way, there are also SBA loans um, included in this whole package, which includes the, um, the $200,000 EIDL loan program, um, which technically can go up to $2 million, the um, SBA Express loan, which goes up to $2 million, and then the uh, regular 7A loan, which uh, it, even without the PPP goes up to $5 million. So there are other loans available um, to help the small business, but again, you have to get your information together, you need to get in front of a banker, and you need to do it now. Anecdotally, have you ever seen anything like this? Like we've been through recessions, but I feel like everything has happened so quickly. You know, what's really struck me is, uh, yeah, how can we be in this bad of shape after less than two months? I mean, it's, it's, frankly, it's a little scary. It, it tells you just how fragile our economy is, that after two months we have what close, uh, close to 20 to 20% 20 unemployment after, you know, after two months. Um, you know, can, can we really be this fragile? Can, you know, we can't get stuff out of China because we're so dependent on China to get, um, you know, basic supplies like, uh, like masks, right? And, and gowns, things like that. So it, it's really a time, I think, that we need to look at, a, we're not gonna change the global economy, but we can change our economy. So I think what, to me, what's a, a big lesson here is look at your own business, look at your situation and say, okay, how am I gonna survive? Let's say this thing doesn't just go another month, let's say it goes another year. How am I gonna survive this? How am I gonna keep going? Right, and I'm sure a lot of businesses that are in survival mode right now, like it's, it's, what, what can they do? Like what, what piece of advice would you give them? You know what, this is, <laughs> I've been telling people, this is, this is the day, not just the year, but the day of the innovator. So if you can change the way you think about business and actually look at the way people are consuming right now, because obviously people are still spending money. They're still, they, you know, most people still have a job. So how can you change your business so that it will encourage people to um, take advantage of what you have to offer and, and do it from a remote standpoint? So if you typically do things People come into your business, you've got to start doing things remotely. If you're not connecting with your customers, you need to figure out a way to connect with your customers. It, um, it may be that you've got current customers that you need to connect with a different way, or it may be that you just need to connect with new customers because think about it, a lot more people are online these days than were online two months ago, and this potentially could be a huge advantage for you. Let's say your employer, you are, you have a job and your employer is applying for this loan. Like, is there anything they need to know? Like as far as the individual goes? Uh, you know what? Th there is. And, and <laughs> here's an interesting, a um, uh, little, little interesting fact. Um, I actually have friends and clients um, that they have employees who have been begging them to be, uh, begging to be fired. The, the, they say, look, the unemployment is really so good right now. I mean, it's so much better than my regular pay. I don't, I don't, 
you know, I'd really rather be fired and be on unemployment. And, and to those people, I would say, don't think you're going to get your job back. So I think employees ought to be grateful. Frankly, I'm an employer. So of course I think that, um, but I think employer employees really should consider that, um, you know, the, the short term, uh, unemployment may be better, but in the long term, it's always better to be working and working in a place where you really enjoy working. And don't think that there aren't going to be a lot of people competing for your jobs um, once this thing clears up a little bit. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, is there anything I missed, anything like as far as just small businesses goes? Well, one of the things that I've learned personally from this um, in the last few weeks is that a lot of times it's not what you know, but it's who you know. And so now is the time to get your team together. I mean, business is a team sport. It's not an individual sport. And, uh, you know, getting your banker, you know, this is an opportunity. It, you, let's say you don't have a banker. It's an opportunity to get to know a, a new banker, right? Establish that relationship because you don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know what's going to happen in the next few months. So establish and maintain that relationship. Same thing with your CPA, your bookkeeper, your attorney. I mean, all of these people are essential people to your business. It's just that most business owners don't really pay that much attention to them, except when they're in a crisis. Well, now we're in a crisis. Now it's time, even if your business is doing well, it's time to get that team together and make sure that you're, you know, helping your team members and drawing on them as well.